Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be presenting our Winter Thoughts Part 8. We're just gonna be going over some of the model updates that we've had and just the upcoming pattern and how it relates to what's gonna be happening this upcoming winter. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Alright, now for today's comment of the day, I wanna know. Which previous winner do you think that this winner really compares to the best? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Also, don't forget to give me a reason why. Now, we're going to be taking this pattern, we're going to be looking at our CFS extended model, that's what they call this, and we're going to be taking a, a look at one week increments, just take a look at the current pattern that we're looking at until the, about the end of November, and then we're going to start taking it month by month, we'll take a look at the rest of October, the entirety of November, December, and January, and even our Jamstech model, which is our Japanese model, has updated and it's actually changed significantly, that'll be towards the end of this video, a lot of exciting things coming up. But here's our first week of October that we're taking a look at, the 15th through the 22nd. It's not actually the first week, but as you can see, a lot of cold air is going to be up there for the upper Midwest, the Rockies, the Pacific Northwest, and a lot of uh, Western Canada actually up through into Alaska, and just kind of neutral temperatures for the Eastern United States. It's going to be uh, overall very close to normal, but actually there's going to be some periods of below normal and some periods of above normal. It's not going to be very average on any given day, uh, actually. So... It, it turns out being average in the end. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that second week where things are going to get a lot colder. Now here we are taking a look at the 22nd through the 29th of October. And as you can see, we actually see that cold air dive a lot further south. But really it's dominated by more of a central United States trough with the two coasts having a little more ridging than the more central regions. Uh, and this is a pattern that we've seen in years past. I call it a horseshoe pattern, where we see the horseshoe of warmth around the cold. Uh, and up and down the coast there on the east coast, it's again close to normal to close out October. Uh, and, and this is going to be quite pleasant most of the time. Nothing too crazy warm, nothing too crazy cold. Uh, it's going to be quite nice there to close out the month of October. There will be some colder days like we've talked about in our upcoming cooldown video. There's going to be a two or three day period this coming weekend actually where we're going to be dealing with some cold. But outside of that, nothing too extreme. The west coast is going to be mostly warm, uh, but there will be some periods of cold as well. All right, now let's take a look at this. 14 to 21 day period. So this is our third week out from the from today. Uh, this is the 29th through the 5th of October. And you can see that according to this model, actually, the cold becomes a lot more centered over the east by this point. So to begin uh, to begin November, uh, we see a lot of those greens showing up. That's actually going to be quite cold if it was to play out this way along the east coast. And we see more of a positive PNA pattern develop, which is those warmer temperatures out west. That's huge. Also, the AO is kind of negative or neutral, uh, maybe even positive. We see a lot of cold up there for northern Canada and then through Greenland. That's usually a, a sign of a positive AO, uh, but a lot of those Russian Arctic regions are closer to above normal. So it's more of a neutral AO, I would say, or Arctic oscillation is what we call it. What we're going to do here is we are going to move on and we're going to take a look at the 5th of November through the 12th of November, and then we're going to take it all the way to the end of November. After that, we're going to take a look at the one-month increments, and we're actually going to get to December and January, talk about how those months are actually looking quite cold right now. All right, so we're at the 21st through the 28th, and you can see a lot of warmth up there for northern Canada. That's crucial. Hopefully, we're still getting plenty of snow despite those warmer-than-normal conditions. This is a very classic negative AO pattern, very normal. I had somebody comment on my last video I was talking about stuff like that. They're like, you're going to ignore the fact that there's such warm temperatures up there. This is very normal, very classic, uh, and there's going to be plenty of times where there's colder than normal conditions up there as well. Uh, this is not something that is unheard of or very abnormal. This is just a classic negative AO pattern. We've seen this since the beginning of, you know, recorded weather history. So, very normal pattern. Here we are taking a look at the, the 5th through the 12th, and as you can see, it's still just dominated by cold in the east, uh, in the upper Midwest and New England, especially here. We could be talking about snow for uh, the upper Midwest and Northeast with those very cold temperatures this time of year. Once you get to the mid to late November, it becomes a lot more plausible for that snowfall to occur. So, we're going to be watching for that neutral temperatures down there for the Southwest. Uh, and then by the time we reach the 12th through the 19th of November, it becomes a lot more sloppy, which usually would indicate the model is starting to get a little bit confused. 
I will say that there is some colder temperatures up there for Alaska and Greenland, and that's kind of something that I'm eyeballing here as a more dominant feature, as well as the warmer temperatures there for uh, Canada, the more central Canada regions, and then more neutral for the United States. I think this is going to be a pattern where it's a lot more zonal, which would mean that the, the jet stream is pretty flat there for the United States. I think this is what this model is trying to indicate. And by the time we reach the 22nd through the 29th of November, the end here, uh, it becomes a lot more clear what this pattern is trying to show. It's showing a colder southeast up through the northeast. This looks like a lot of, a, I guess, a El Nino pattern, which is very odd. Very cold Alaska, which would usually mean we don't get very much Arctic air down to the United States. Uh, as you can see, that's actually the case here because uh, we see warmer than normal temperatures pretty much across the uh, Canada for the most part and in through the north central United States as well. Usually this would mean that we're in a pretty cold pattern here for these blue areas, but it's not like Arctic bitter cold because that supply of cold air isn't coming from Canada. It's more of a locked in cold air mass. So expect it to be quite cool if this was the type of pattern to occur. This is very far out to so take it with a grain of salt. Keep in mind, but if a pattern like this was to occur where there's warmer than normal conditions to the north of it and it's locked in further south in the Arctic regions, that's more of a cool, not cold pattern, if that makes sense. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the monthly increments. So October, November, and then December and January, which are looking colder and colder, according to this model. And then we're even going to take a look at our Jamps tech, which has also shifted colder. So things are kind of lining up in a way that cold and snow lovers probably would quite enjoy. All right, now here we are taking a look at first off October, and this is only going to be half a month because we're at October 15th, but as you can see, colder than normal conditions up there for the upper Midwest, a lot of the central United States, like we were saying earlier, up through the Pacific Northwest, with more warm for the Southwest as well as the immediate East Coast. The further inland you go, the more cold it gets, but it's going to be near normal, I would say, uh, pretty much on average for the East Coast region there, uh, which is going to be quite nice. For November... Uh, this model, the CFS monthly model, so it's the same model, it's just a different time frame here. Uh, it says warm in the west, which would be a positive PNA pattern there, with some colder than normal conditions for the eastern half. Uh, and, and confidence in this is kind of shaky because we've seen some models that are saying more of a, you know, warmer in the east a little bit here for at least the first half of November. We're going to watch that closely. Uh, but the important thing here is that as we get to the longer range, we see December colder in the east. Again, I talked a little bit about how I think the, the winter could get to a little bit of a later start, but this model seems to think that's not the case. Very cold for December to start. This could obviously really change. We're at October 15th here, so this is pretty extended into this model's range, but this would show a negative AO pattern, those warmer conditions up there for the Arctic regions, uh, at forcing the cold air down to other regions in the world, uh, a very... A weak polar vortex that is allowing those troughs to really exit. Now, January, it moves more towards a, a more positive AO. We see some of the colder conditions make their way way up into Canada. That's going to be good for colder, colder conditions later on. Um, last year was the complete opposite, by the way. By the way, last winter, we saw mostly uh, a, a very strong positive AO, which meant we were dealing with very cold Arctic conditions, historic sea ice, uh, things of that nature because the cold air was just locked up in there and it was not exiting. It was just it was just building and building and building and that's why that's why April, May, June was so cold. It was like our winter because that cold air finally released after building up all that time and it really allowed for just a historically cold April, May, and June almost for the United States. So a really odd weather pattern. But here for January, we're still dealing with the colder than normal conditions in the east. I'm sure cold and snow lovers in the east would love this. Uh, for right now, this is what this model is showing. And the southeast ridge has really receded, mostly just for Florida, uh, which would be significantly lesser than what it has been for years past. Um, so we're going to watch that closely. The Pacific Northwest is still pretty cold. That's what we've been calling for in our winter forecast as well. The, that cold is going to be, I think, in the northwest through the Rockies and down into the central and eastern United States. Warm in the southwest mostly. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the precipitation forecast for December and January, because that's going to be important, obviously. And then we're going to take a look at that Jams Tech forecast as well, like I said. So here we are taking a look at the December precipitation forecast on our, on our CFS model. 
And as you can see, the odd thing here is we see dry in the Pacific Northwest. I don't think that's going to happen with our La Nina. That's very unusual. It's possible, but I might need to update my winter forecast, I guess. I'm, I am going to be updating it eventually, but uh, dry, I just don't find that likely in a La Nina. Also, the southeast and south central United States, very, very above average precipitation there for December. Odd, because in the El Nino, we typically see this, and it extends all the way to the mid-Atlantic, indicating possibly some... Um, Nor'easters trying to get going for the month of December here. With that cold, that would mean snow. That would mean snow for uh, portions of the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic. Unfortunately for New England, we're seeing a little bit of some more dry conditions. They're probably not happy about that. Uh, that's obviously one model run here. We'll need to watch that closely. But same story for January. Uh, the Pacific Northwest starts to get some precipitation, and the Southeast still has the above average precipitation, but dry for the Ohio Valley and the Northeastern states. And this is pretty much the opposite of what I've been saying in my winter forecast. Uh, if I need to change this, I am not scared to do so. You know, I'm not ashamed if I had to completely flip it. But for now, this is one model. Uh, and I just, in a La Nina, this is just such an odd pattern. And as we take a look at that jams text projection of the precipitation for the entire winter, this is December, January, and February, it kind of agrees. The East Coast there is more close to normal precipitation, which we would obviously take because of the fact that there should be cold air in place. Uh, it, it, really, anything that's near normal for this winter, it, it would be a significant upgrade from the previous two winters. So I I personally would take that any time of day, and I think you probably should too if you're a cold and snow lover. Uh, for the Pacific Northwest, it is calling for the above normal precipitation, so that's I agree with that. I think that's a very big likelihood in a, in a La Nina, and the dry in California, that's a classic La Nina precipitation lineup. Uh, even even the eastern United States, it really looks very classic. I think typically the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley would have more above average precipitation, but really this is quite typical for a La Nina outside of that, mostly for the west. Uh, it, it looks very classic. Now here's the temperature forecast, and this has looked a lot worse in previous months, so I will tell you that because you're probably thinking like, whoa, red everywhere. Uh, these models do have a tendency to do that. They kind of overestimate the warmth in most cases globally. Sometimes there obviously is cases where the entire United States would be warm, but usually globally as a whole, they do overestimate that a little bit, uh, especially this model lately uh, in years past has been doing that significantly. Now we do have the specifically warm in the, in the, in the West, they're more close to normal in the East, I guess the Eastern half of the United States. Like I said before, you would have to take this compared to the last two winters because we would be in the dark red. Uh, if if there was an accurate forecast for last winter, it would be dark red across the board for the eastern United States. So being in those lighter pinks uh, is, is significant. And, it, and this is a big upgrade even from what this model was showing last month. So if it trends in this direction, that would be good news for cold and snow lovers as well. Now, there's one significant thing. This is a kind of like a teaching point here. This was the September Jamstack run. Look at the Pacific there. Notice there's blues offshore of the West Coast. That was it kind of hinting at a negative PDO there. With those colder waters offshore of the West Coast, that would encourage some colder air to enter that western region of Canada and the United States, which in turn would encourage warmer air to move into the eastern United States. So that's significant. Also, that, that red blob being that far in the middle of the Pacific is just a bad sign uh, for cold and snow lovers in the east. If you're in the west, that was a good sign for you if you're a cold and snow lover. Now watch that Pacific region as I switch it in three, two, one. And here's the October run. You can see it's moved those warmer waters significantly further east, closer to the coast. That is a huge change. That is massive in the grand scheme of things. Even though it's just a, a slight shift, this looks a lot more like a positive PDO or at least neutral which really just encourages less of that cold air along the west coasts of Canada and the United States, which in turn helps in the long run for the eastern United States to have some more cold air opportunities later down the road. Anyway, that was just a little feature there. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think the rest of October is going to end like? And Zeta Durf in said, in terms of temperatures, I think October will end on a near normal or slightly above normal note here in south central Kansas. I think that's a good estimate, uh, although I do think that you could see some colder than, than normal conditions move in for your region there uh, specifically. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Madbirds, Dan Hazard, Mark J, and Cindy Klein. 
alongside our Platinum Patrons Donna Carnes and Larry LaPan. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.